So there is absurdism. And what absurdism largely is, is it's this idea that you can look at the face value of reality and the very seriousness of what it is. You know, because there there's some very um, dark and depressing and serious things that um, exist in reality. COVID, um, people are dying constantly. And yet, at the same time, you know, you all the everybody who's um, dying or hurt, you know, is existing in this one bubble and in another bubble, um, you got, uh, the Republicans who are like, it's a liberal agenda, it, you know, it's a liberal agenda, you know, and then you got the Democrats who are like, we got the CDC to back us up. You know, people are dying. And, you know, and people are dying. But, so it's it's a serious thing. Um, but to the people who have COVID and are dying from it, you know, and the people who are affected by it, it's really, you know, it's a big question right now if you think about it, because um, many people do die, and they go to the afterlife, and if they go to the afterlife, and you got to ask yourself if you're an absurdist what does absurdism mean to me if my loved one's going to die of covid and it's really it's about looking at the larger picture um the point of philosophy is not to ground ourselves, not always to ground ourselves in the seriousness of reality. And yet, absurdism asks us to do just that and see it as nothing, nothing to worry about. Something that's just you know, play, and, you know, how do you look at death as, as play, you know, and I think that you have to realize that life in general, as we, um, live our lives, you know, we do all these meaningless and oftentimes meaningful, um, at least they seem meaningful to us, you know, family, friends, um, going to events, you know, partying, uh, any, uh, you know, but, you know, there's also the sad moments that are meaningful, you know, you watch somebody grow up and, you know, it's, it's like, you wonder, um, where does, where does absurdism, why is it relevant during the age of COVID? It's a, it really is a big question. And I think I'd like to answer that. When, 
when you look at, and I have to think about this, when you look at the fact that a person is dying, the reality of experiencing death is a total shocker for a lot of people, and it's, um, it's evidently an experience that, um, I don't think it, it quite corresponds with reality for a lot of people. It's like that guy in office space who gets fired from his job, and, you know, he gets fired from his job, and everybody loves the guy. And he wasn't even supposed to be working because they fired him like 10 years ago or something like that, if I remember correctly, maybe five or whatever. And now all he can focus on is his stapler. You know, he just repeats that over and over again. My stapler, my stapler. And he says it in this funny voice. And, you know, this is a metaphor. It's not a literal um, connection. It's a figurative connection. And if you really are struggling with somebody who is sick, You know, it's like you're probably at the moment when you do finally lose them, if you do, you're thinking to yourself, you, you don't know what to think. You know, you're thinking, you know, same thing, same kind of idea. You're thinking, you know, rather than thinking my stapler, um, you're thinking, you know, my friend or... Um, you know, Gene or Bob or Chris or um, Lisa, you know, or Evan, you know, and, you know, that's, that's it might be all that you can really process is their name because you, you already know how they died. They died of COVID. Um, and there's just a level of trauma with that. And for the living, I think it's, it's really a big question as to how do I face this if it challenges my absurdist view? And I think in order to face that moment of shock, I want you to think about the reality of, you know, just what does a coroner do? They, or a funeral home director, they work with dead bodies after people have died, but they're not in there anymore, or at least I would assume they're not, you know, I'm religious, but kind of religious, I'm more atheistical, um, different people have different views, um, and I respect that, but you know, it's got to be really weird and they for somebody to work with dead bodies and yet they can't do that job in shock you know so they have to get past that shock and they have to learn to process death um and you know it's uh I think it's a little bit different when 
it's you on the table or it's your um, sister or your niece or somebody that you know and it's like you know if you were the coroner you know I'm sure you'd be excused from that case um, but you'd still have to process that and I think that absurdism is a process um, and in that process of getting past what has happened and moving into the reality where someday we can laugh again, you know, because I, hopefully after COVID we can laugh again someday. Um, even after um, having lost our loved ones. And I know right now it may not seem like it, but you after loss um, if you want to laugh again that's really the big question of absurdism and I think the way that you do that is through camaraderie um, family member that I had um, kind of shut down after um, the death of another family member and you know that happens a lot when people shut down after death of someone that they love and they're in shock and they're, they don't know how to deal with it and so what do you do in that situation you know well, what you do is you find camaraderie because in life is a game, even though it's a serious game. And you find camaraderie in life through other people, through nature, through the things that you find that make you unique, the hobbies, the habits, um, the wonderful things. Um, you know, sometimes they're momentary, and uh, jokes often are. And like I said, it's not a joke, but someday there will be jokes, and you will have the choice whether you want to laugh or you want to cry. And your family members give you, I think a re your, the deceased really give you a reason to laugh, not because they died, but rather because of the fact that they lived and during their life, they probably wanted to laugh just as much as they wanted you to laugh. And uh, it's a big takeaway. And that's a sense of camaraderie with the dead that everybody should have. Is that the dead don't want us to cry at what happened to them. They want us to laugh at the reality that we live in and they want that reality to be happy and like a game for us. They want us to move on from the darkness that happened and, you know, find comrades in this big game called life. 
And um, there's actually um, this story someone told me. It was a very serious story about a homeless woman. And I really care about people who are homeless because I, I have a lot of friends who have been homeless. And it's a it's a harsh reality. Because you have nobody who's coming to you. Um, nobody who's gonna um, really put you up in a room. You're on the street. And it's cold. It's raining. It's windy. Um, it's hot. You've got no water. You have no... Um, you can't go to the bathroom. You can't change clothes. You know, you have no ID. You can't pay for medications. You can't get health care. There's a lot of things that you don't have access to. And there was this woman who this man was talking about. And it, this man had, um, he had multiple personality disorder, um, from what I understand. But he talked about how, uh, almost in a laughing tone, not in a mocking tone, but in a way that he saw life as a game as it is on its face. And I think he found his sense of camaraderie um, with this woman um, because of what she was going through. Because he was in the mental health system. And she basically got a clothes hanger and bent it and was fishing around for a cigarette and a drainage pipe. And when she was doing that, um, his response in the story, you know, which words never match up to the reality, and oftentimes when we say things, they sound funny almost or strange um, compared to the seriousness of what they are. And when he kind of balanced that out with this line, you know, he said, she must have really wanted that cigarette. And uh, that really had some deep, empathic um, value um, that I don't think he fully grasped um, within himself. But the whole idea that she really wanted that cigarette you know, and I, I think he gave her one is how the story ended, but, um, or she got it, but, you know, it's, it's a cigarette butt and that's all she had. And, uh, it was sitting in a drainage ditch. And so she's pulling this out with the clothes hanger and, you know, you got to wonder, um, Once she got that cigarette and she lit it, you know, I, t I talked about in the, the existential video, you know, smoking your last cigarette. And, uh, you know, that's, that was in the Holocaust, but you could also look at it this way. Is it smoking that, um, the first cigarette of your life, you know, in, you know, a year, um, given that, you know, you hadn't smoked a cigarette because you, you couldn't access any, or maybe, you know, you did get cigarettes, but this one, this one really, this was going to change your life. Um, and you know, or it was going to make you feel better. I think that's what it was for this woman, is that it would make her feel better. And, you know, that's what absurdism is about, is smoking that last cigarette, you know, 
is not what it's about. It's more about smoking the cigarette that after we've had the panic and anxiety of life, the, like this woman was having a panic attack, you know, or something like that, the, then we we puff on that cigarette and all of a sudden all that anxiety stops. And you can laugh again. And you have that cigarette and that cigarette, you know, it calms you down, but you haven't even lit it yet. And you're calm. It's a little it's a little weird to um not have had the effects of the nicotine yet all of a sudden it's like you know nothing's the matter just for that momentary pause. I mean she was still homeless, yes. Um which is very sad. Um but for that moment it's like she wasn't, you know? And I think absurdism has a great value. And if you get what I'm saying, if you have a loved one who's dying from COVID, maybe rather than crying you can laugh on the inside and bring someone joy for them because what that person wants and should everyone really wants is they want you to have camaraderie in life because they love you. So you should find somebody else in the hospital or um, find somebody else in your town um, who's still around. You know, yeah, you can, you know, catch up on the details of uh, your loved one, but, you know, Maybe uh, don't just be there for them, but be there for everybody who's in that hospital or who's in that town who's not only sick, but not sick and fully alive. And for the people who don't feel fully alive, help them to feel fully alive. Help them to laugh at life. Be their comrade.